What's going on guys, this is Hire Rider here and uh, today we are on a Hire Sung GV650 also known as the Aquilia, 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 Aquilia Pro <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know how you say it, I don't know it's probably not even Korean <laughs> oh man, um, but yeah uh, we're on the cruiser, pretty much the cruiser sister of my bike and um, I'm going to do a bit of a review of it today I wouldn't say so much of a review because I've not really ridden a cruiser before this is the first cruiser I've ridden probably more of a first impressions kind of a video if anything so this is the 2015 model and I've got it on loan from the local bike shop called Tita Stevens while Sting's in getting a little bit of um, uh, getting her front discs replaced um, so they've given me this bike which is cool I mean it, I'm always open to trying new bikes um, I've not ridden a cruiser before so it's kind of exciting uh, it took me a little bit to, to get used to it first I've had it for about uh, well, 24 hours now or just over 24 hours and um, yeah like it's it's very different now I come from a super sport bike so my normal daily commute is on a super sport a higher sung GT 650R and now this being a cruiser completely different seating position I mean you've got your feet out in front of you which just feels to me unnatural probably a little bit more natural to someone that hasn't ridden a super sport um, and the, the handlebars are high up which um, I guess if anything it makes this bike a lot more comfortable than my bike which is cool I'm happy of that if anything I really wish I had this kind of bike for my cruise down here from Brisbane to Melbourne because it would have been a lot more comfortable than riding on a super sport with a hard seat <laughs> um, the seat on this is fairly soft the position on it is is fairly casual so it's not anywhere near as aggressive as the seating position that was on oh, you know, that's on my super sport so the position on this is good everything on it just seems like a cruiser should I suppose just given by the name being cruisy you know uh, it's it's very comfortable it's easy to sit on it's easy to ride as well it's fairly forgiving it's not it's going to completely launch off at the set of lights like uh, like mine is despite having pretty much exactly the same engine it is belt driven so it's not driven by chain it's a little bit different so I don't know things on it just seem like it's less sporty if you could say <laughs> as, a, as a word less sporty the throttle on it seems pretty good the response is is good it's smooth the gear transitions are smooth it is a five speed not a six speed like on my gt 650r so they are a five speed manual they are the usual uh, one down and four up so yeah excuse the absolutely appalling nature of it at the moment i've only had it for a day and it's completely filthy because i've been riding in the rain uh, this is actually the second time I've recorded this video and the first time I did it it was absolutely pouring down rain so it was <laughs> I mean I've got the review done but it was just miserable <laughs> to say the least so as you can tell the the dash layout is fairly basic you don't get a tack or anything like that so you can't really see what your revs are all you get is the simple speedometer, your odometer and your trips, your time, your water temperature and your fuel level. And that's pretty much it. You have your basic your indicators, your neutral, um, that's your fuel injector light um, to warn you if it's got issues with fuel injection. Also pretty much just like the check engine light essentially and the uh, high beam line and that's it that's all you get that's all there is the dash itself i don't know there's a couple of aspects of this bike and yeah i know it's a higher sung uh, but a couple of aspects of this bike just feel a little bit more cheaper than with my bike with my higher sung gt650r 
for example, as I'm accelerating, and you'll probably hear soon, the dash rattles. And literally, it just sort of sits there, it just, just rattles. Um, which seems a bit cheap to me. It seems really plasticky and, and flimsy, to be honest. Uh, and there's just a few other things on this bike that just doesn't seem quite as refined. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just get more of a cheap vibe from this. And yeah, I do understand that it is cheap. Um, but having said that, my bike is cheap and I've got no issues with it. Um, which is a shame. Like, cruisy, they've got to be stylish and they've got to be, um, you know, good quality and uh, just, I don't know, the, the dash is probably what makes it the worst. Everything else is meh, it's fine. The dash just, uh, I don't know, I don't know whether there's aftermarket dashes you can replace it with or maybe it's loose, I, I really don't know. Uh, just feels cheap, that's all. Apart from that, everything else is fairly easy to operate on the bike. Um, it's easier to find neutral on this bike than it is on mine, which is funny. Um, the engine is pretty much the same, a couple of different little plates and things, but essentially I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same engine. A couple of other parts of the use that are the same as well. Um, the little section here where you got your, your kill switch and, and over here on, on the left where you got your indicator, exactly the same as my bike. Your levers, exactly the same as well. She gets up and going, all right? Oh, are you serious? Why do people do this? It's a flippin'... You better stop behind me, buddy. Retard. Hate it when people do that. As you can tell, it's very quiet for a cruiser. Um, I would have kind of half expected it to be really loud. I probably would stick a louder pipe on it just to be, um, have your presence a little bit more known. Uh, because the horn on this sucks as well. I've used the horn already and it sounds like a cat dying. And it's really quiet and it's just, it's the worst horn ever, to be honest. It's piss weak. Uh, so you definitely want to use your exhaust. Like there's that rattle, it does it all the time. It's shocking, really shocking, really annoying is what it is as well. Apart from that, she seems pretty good. It seems like a fairly sturdy, uh, comfortable and easy bike to ride. It only took me really 10 minutes or 15 minutes of riding it to really be confident on it, I suppose you could say. I mean, if anything with this bike, I just really like, <sighs> whatever, um, I just really like how comfortable it is. I mean, it's really laid back, really just, as I said, comfortable. <laughs> There's not really any other word to describe it apart from comfortable. The seat's soft, the position of it is really laid back. Uh, your bars aren't too high, so your bars are, are the right height where it feels like it's in a good position. It's not really um, hurting your arms or anything like that. As I mentioned, because I'm not really used to these these foot rests, um, if you can call them that, it's not really because it's not something I'm used to. It sort of feels like my feet are going to slip off. Could be to do with the boots I'm wearing. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, as I said, it's very quiet. I mean, you could hardly hear that. If it was my bike, he would be absolutely shitting himself by now. Um, <laughs> but with this thing, uh, it's really, um, <laughs> it's very quiet. In terms of styling, they do look good. I like the combination of the chrome. I do like this color as well. This color just contrasts very well with the black uh, and the silver together. It just, it stands out. It does look very nice. I've seen a couple of the other colors and um, they still look all right. I think this one's probably the best color. And it's just personal preference. I mean, you know, you can go whatever color you want. It doesn't really matter. Is the bike good for learners? Yes. This sort of bike is very good for learners. Not only is it because it's restricted with the power, so you're not, you know, 
know, losing control of it. It's fairly forgiving in the wet. I've ridden it in the wet plenty of times now, being Melbourne, of course. And it's fairly forgiving. It's fairly easy to control. There's another thing that I think that's, uh, that's really cheap. I'll show you in a sec. Well, two things, really. This feels, looks cheap. Um, your reservoir. Um, but another thing is the, the handlebars just seem really cheap. The grips seem really cheap. They just seem really plasticky. I mean, you can see the seam on this one. Um, better focus on the road. Um, you can see the seam on it and it just feels, I don't know, it just, uh, definitely the grips on my GTR are a lot better than this. Um, softer as well. So, uh, they're definitely something that I would upgrade for sure. Other uh, grips. And being Melbourne, I'd probably upgrade them to heated grips. Things seem, things seem cheaper on this than they do on, on mine. And I don't know whether that's because the bike itself is cheaper. I really doubt it. If anything, they'll be about the same. But I just don't know. This seems cheaper. So that pretty much just wraps it up now for my review of the Hyasung GV650. There's not really too many other points I really want to cover or really need to cover. As I mentioned, it's not really much of a review, it's more of just a first impressions. Just things that I notice about it in comparison to a, my Super Sport. Would I recommend this bike? Absolutely. If you're looking for a cruiser on a budget and it's a learner cruiser, then absolutely. This bike ticks all the boxes. There we go, guys. Plenty more reviews to come soon. So make sure you tune in, hit subscribe, and make sure you get those notifications when all my awesome new videos come in. And be sure to leave a comment if you've got any questions or anything like that. I'll do my best to answer them as well as I can. Hey guys, stay safe out there. Catch you later.